ever since it was announced, AEW Fight Forever has been on the radar for many wrestling fans across the globe. The game promised to harken back to an era of wrestling games that the genre has pretty much strayed away from from over the years. Simply put, expectations were high and the game had a lot to live up to. Well, Fight Forever is finally here, but is this something that wrestling gamers need? Is this something just for casual AEW fans? Should this just remain on the store shelves forgotten? Well, we're here to talk about all of this and more in this in-depth review. Let's take a look. Danny from the Famicast here. He is a bastard. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe and turn on those notifications. Leave us a comment down below and we may read it out on our bi-weekly show called The Famicast. Today though, we're taking a look at the Nintendo Switch version of AEW Fight Forever in this review. The controls are a bit complex, but I think they come as second nature once you pretty much get used to them. Now, high strikes are performed with Y, kicks with X, the ability to run with B, you can do a strike guard with R, a grapple guard with L, taunts with the ride stick, uh, you have the ability to change opponents, uh, your opponent target with the push of the left stick, and of course, you can do grapples with B. Now, just as with classic AKI games in the past, a weak strong grapple system has been implemented in Fight Forever. Basically, a tap of B initiates a weak grapple, while a long press does a strong one. Once in a grapple, you can do a variety of moves by pressing the face buttons and a direction. Special moves are also often tied to grapple this grapple system as well. Not for everyone, but most of the wrestlers. So yeah, once you build up enough of your meter that's on the bottom of the screen, flicking the right stick will give you the ability to perform uh, a special move. Now reversals and blocks. Now these are also possible with the press of RRL, like I kind of talked about before. And like with these, being able to basically correctly gauge your opponent's attacks or grapples, I think these are key, especially when you're playing the game at higher difficulty levels. You know, simply put, just generally speaking with the base controls here, I think they feel actually really good, the action is really fast, and I think there's a lot of nuance here to the gameplay. There are over 50 playable wrestlers in Fight Forever. Now, fan favorites like Kenny Omega, The Young Bucks, Adam Cole, Anna Jay, John Moxley, Jack Perry, Chris Jericho, Darby Allin, Britt Baker, and others, they're here too. You got a couple of legends here as well, like Sting, Owen Hart, Paul White, they're also playable. Now there really are a lot of wrestlers to choose from when it comes down to it, but even with that said, some of the attire or choices are, that are basically impl implemented here into the game, they're not quite in line with the roster, uh, what's been happening over the past six months or to a year in some cases. Now, I started watching AEW shortly after I uh, tried out the game at the Tokyo Game Show in September 2022. Now, I find myself disappointed that certain wrestlers aren't included. Uh, you know, I would have loved to see the Guns, the Acclaim, Swerve Strickland, Kip Sabian. Maybe I'm the only one with uh, Kip there. And, you know, and others join the, join the roster. Now, you know, given the lengthy development time for this game, I do understand why some of this stuff just hasn't happened some, with the outfits and, you know, to some of the guys and gals that aren't in the game right now. Of course, you know, the world of AEW doesn't sleep. Stars rise and fall for various reasons on a weekly basis. So, I don't know. I mean, obviously the season pass, I think that's going to be adding more and more wrestlers over time, which is, you know, it's okay, I guess. But still, it'll be interesting to see how the roster and the game gen in general just evolves over time. Now, getting actually to the meat and potatoes here, the actual game, though. Basically, after you beat up the game, you'll see, you know, all the modes and match types that are available uh, in the game. You know, across the top, you'll see Exhibition, Online, Custom, Road to the Elite, Challenges, and Shop. And we'll get to these later on kind of like an individual basis. Now, as for match types, the following are on offer in Fight Forever. You have one-on-one, -on -one, two two-on-two, a three-way match, a four-way match, Casino Battle Royale, Exploding Barbed Wire Deathmatch, ladder match, mini games, and training. Now, I think most of these are pretty self-explanatory, even more so if you've been watching AEW for a while, but I'd like to get into just a few of these. Now, the exploding barbed wire death match is just as crazy as it sounds. Now, in this, you play in a one-on-one -on -one match against your opponent with the ropes replaced with explosive barbed wire. Like, if you throw your opponent into the wire, they get quite a shock. Basically, it kind of explodes on them. And after a certain, certain amount of time has elapsed in the match, the whole thing explodes, dealing out damage to everyone in the ring. It's crazy, and it's actually really fun. You see blood and all sorts of stuff. It's, it's nuts.
Now, ladder matches, they can be a bit tricky when it comes to implementation in games. However, what's on offer here in Fight Forever is actually quite fun. Now, just in case you're not familiar, these match types put players against each other with a simple goal. The first is to scale the ladder, and the second is to grab a belt or item that's dangling over the middle of the ring. You win if you do that. Now, what's kind of cool about this too, and maybe as to be expected, the ladder can actually be used as a melee weapon in the game, and you can also use it to jump off of. It's kind of like a high risk, high reward type of a thing. Now, climbing the ladder here is actually pretty simple when it comes to controls. To initiate the climb, you simply press ZL, and then you press ZR, and once you're at the top, and then you'll see like a uh, like a, a couple of button prompts that come up. And basically, if you hit all these things, you will grab the item at the top of the ladder. Now, obviously, you want to do this before your opponent knocks you off. Now, I thought this match type was really well done. Again, you know, some games from the past required players to like mash buttons all the way up to the top, like just constantly mashing, which, you know, quite frankly, just kind of sucked. Now, this is a little bit more stress-free. I mean, there's a little bit of button mashing, but it's nothing like, you know, some of those games from the past. I've actually found this quite enjoyable. Mini games are also a part of the package in Fight Forever. Now, these usually have no relation to action in the squared circle whatsoever. Instead, these are like optional side games that can be ran through relatively quickly. You know, honestly, it looks like these would be a lot of fun or at least somewhat fun to play with other people. I don't have anybody to play with, so I've just been kind of stuck playing against the CPU, and it's just okay. You know, controls are often simplified and felt a little bit shallow. I mean, as expected, these are mini games. And, you know, it's not available as of the time I'm making this review, but like another mode called Stadium Stampede, like a Battle Royale type of mode that uh, they're actually planning to do, that, that's coming to the game in the near future. There, there are a handful of uh, mini games that are available right now, and I think it's going to be interesting to see what comes to the game down the line. Um, you know, if this is the only game you're going to buy this year and you're a huge AEW fan, I think this might seem cool as just like an aside. But if you just want to focus on wrestling, I mean, this mode is worth at least giving a shot, but it likely won't be something that you come back to very often. Now, Fight Forever does offer a handful of customization options. Of course, the coolest thing here is the ability to create your own wrestler. Now, there are quite a few options here to create this wrestler of your dreams. You know, you can mess around with things like, obviously, ring attire, casual attire, for things that you'd wear outside of uh, the ring, like, uh, and stuff like that. Moves, obviously, taunts. Uh, and also this meticulous ring entrance setting <laughs> that you can go through. Uh, these are just some of the things that you can tinker with here. It's actually pretty robust. But, you know, even with that said, there are some limitations with wrestler creation and also in editing uh, wrestlers that are on the existing roster. Now, just to just generally speaking, some items can't be mixed with others. So, like, if you try to put on, like, specific knee pads, you can't wear them with other kinds of equipment. I mean, I guess that kind of makes sense. I, I don't know. I don't wear wrestling clothes or equipment, so I don't know. But... Yeah, then other things too, like seemingly simple things, like changing outfits for existing wrestlers. This is almost impossible. Like, you are able to make some slight changes to them, like basically just giving them different shirts, but it's not as extensive as you might expect, which is pretty disappointing. There are some other odd problems with the game that you'll find if you're customizing things too, especially with the create wrestler thing. I, I didn't do too much of the uh, create a, uh, event or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, going through long lists is extremely tedious and really slow. Uh, sometimes it'll, it'll even like kind of slow down and stuff, and I really don't know why. You know, in terms of just generally speaking, just what's on offer for customization, I think it's great. I wish there were more options of things that you can do with the the wrestlers on the roster. Uh, still, I mean, there there's a lot of stuff that you can do just for your own creations, which is pretty cool. Road to the Elite is essentially the story mode in Fight Forever. Now, in this mode, you choose any wrestler you like. It could be real or created, and you go through a calendar year of AEW. You'll compete in pay-per-views, as well as weekly shows like Dynamite, Rampage, and more. Now, not only this, but Fight Forever actually does an admirable job at trying to give players a feel of what life is like on the road, if you will, uh, for wrestlers. Now, once you arrive in town, you'll have four turns to do various activities. Uh, you can work out, you can visit famous locations, eat local cuisine, go to press events and stuff like that. It's kind of cool. Most of the time, these will net you like health points or in-game currency. Now, this currency can be used to upgrade your created wrestlers, purchase items like ring attire, moves, unlockable characters, etc. You can find these, those specific things in the shop section. And, and, you know, more. There's a lot of things that you can do. Health also plays a role in Road to the Elite. 
Now, if you go into a match or work out at less than your best, the chances of getting injured increases. Now, that's a cool idea, but it doesn't feel too fleshed out to me. I think, well, you know, for me, I'm just, I'm, I'm a pretty meticulous, risk-averse gamer. So I always, you know, err on the side of caution with these type of things. And in this case, you know, I always make sure that I'm, my character would usually be about 80% or better before I step into the ring or do a workout. Now, if your character gets hurt, there are simple enough ways to get them patched up. But, you know, it honestly seems like to me it's more of an annoyance than anything. Road to the Elite contains various video clips featuring key moments in the promotion junk history. Now, for someone like me, who's relatively new to AEW, it's cool to see these to get a better understanding of how things went down over the years. Still, going through this mode, you know, multiple times, Road to the Elite, uh, it'll bring up the same events and sometimes the same videos, uh, depending on which path you go down. And, you know, speaking on, on that and playing multiple times, you are encouraged to play through this mode multiple times uh, for a couple of good reasons. You know, first, this mode is the best way to boast up, boost up your created wrestlers. Uh, you can really strengthen them up, get them, make them get faster, all, all sorts of different stuff. Um, second here, it's a great way to earn some in-game currency that can be used to pick up a variety of moves and clothing for your creations. You know, and lastly, I think depending on how you win or decisions that are made along the way, matches, feuds, and more will come about differently here. So... Yeah, there, there are several different, I guess, scenarios that are kind of in place in the game. I don't know how these all kind of shake out, but yeah, the more times you play through the game, uh, play through the mode, the more of these that you'll see play out. Now, on paper, while there is quite a bit to offer, I still did find Road to the Elite to be a little bit lacking. I, I think it's cool, but it is a little bit formulaic. While something like this might have been groundbreaking back in the day, it just isn't so much with Fight Forever. Now, is the mode still fun? Yeah, I, I think so, but I think your mileage will definitely vary. Now, as for online, I was unfortunately not able to get connected to any online matches in my time, or at least while capturing and all that type of stuff leading up to this review. It might have something to do with my region matchmaking. Uh, maybe there's not a lot of players in Japan or around this area. Yeah, I would try to get on, but things would just kind of hang there. You know, honestly, I would say if you're wanting to play the game online, you might have better luck on other hardware, PC, Xbox, PlayStation, stuff like that. You know, one interesting thing that I did want to bring up here was the online nature of Fight Forever. Now, an online connection is not required. They've been pretty clear about that from the start. But upon booting up the game, you will be automatically connected to the Fight Forever online server. It's usually not a big deal, but if you're in a place with spotty internet connection like I am when I'm capturing video, you may run into some issues. I experienced the game just freezing up mid-match and also having like system level prompts telling me to get connected. Now this likely won't be much of an issue for most, but for a game that's prided itself on not needing the internet to enjoy what's on offer, I found this a bit strange. I think a simple solution would just to be have the online turned off upon booting up the game completely like in on an in-game basis and then making it something that you can just switch on at your leisure i don't know again this is an issue that likely won't impact many people but i felt it was at least worth mentioning now, challenges daily weekly and general challenges are a way i guess to keep gamers coming back to fight forever uh, they're usually pretty simple enough you know win x amount of matches with certain wrestlers or play a certain amount of matches stuff like this i honestly kind of forgot about these while uh, playing the game i was just kind of focusing on road to the elite and a couple other things like that but i suppose this could be somewhat compelling for some fans out there obviously if you watched the video this far you've uh seen what the characters look like here they're basically somewhat cartoon-like versions of your favorite wrestlers from aew now while that style might not be to everyone's liking i think it serves the game well and the fact that it can basically make the game look almost the same across the board regardless of hardware the more realistic you go when you scale things down to the switch i mean you, you can really see a big difference so i think having this type of artist art aesthetic is a good idea here Specifically talking about the Switch version, things are definitely scaled back and a bit fuzzy looking, especially in cutscenes. You can kind of see that like right here. I don't understand why that's happening specifically in these cutscenes. I mean, the, the, it's still a little bit fuzzy when you're playing, but not like this. You know, on a positive note though, the game does run at a relatively smooth frame rate, uh, despite these lacking visuals. Now, Fight Forever suffers from several graphical issues on top of what I just mentioned. You know, frame skipping, random things like, you know, ropes start bouncing randomly and other things too, like wrestlers appearing on top of thin air or, you know, running through the ring itself. These type of things happen. You know, I haven't had a whole bunch of this crazy stuff that you've probably seen on social media, you know, people falling through the ring and all that type of stuff. I haven't had that happen to me personally. 
but I have had a couple of weird things happen. Basically, I mean, th these type of things should not be overlooked if you're thinking about picking up this game. There are bugs, and I don't know if or when they're going to be fixed. I don't know, but if you can get over that, I think you can still have fun here. AW Fight Forever definitely has some performance issues. Nevertheless, I still find myself having quite a bit of fun with it. Things like animations just skipping completely were visually jarring, but they rarely, if ever, felt like they were actually working against me when it came to gameplay. Now, if you're an AEW fan, you, I think you'll definitely have some fun with this one. If you're a fan of the old AKI N64 titles or other arcade-like wrestling games from back in the day, mm, you might find yourself a little bit disappointed with the presentation. I think the gameplay is, is fun, uh, it's fast, it, it's great, I really like that. Uh, there is a lot to like here, but some people will likely get frustrated or bored. I just hope that things can get a little bit better over time, but we'll just have to wait and see. But let's turn things over to you guys. Have you picked up AEW Fight Forever? What do you think so far? What are you hoping happens to the game, like in terms of characters, modes, or anything like that? Sign up in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Now, as always, thank you guys for checking this video out. If you like what you see, please feel free to drop this one a like. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe, all that type of stuff. Tons of podcasts, video reviews, looks in Japanese, exclusive things, all sorts of stuff. And a whole lot more. Again, this is Danny from the Famicast. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you later.